Good evening, everyone. This is uh, June 3rd, 2019. This is the first meeting of the month for the trustees. Uh, trustees are, are here, along with Fiscal Officer Stillman, uh, Road Administrator Gokenauer, Fire Chief Altman, Zoning Czar, whatever you are, Zospector, <laughs> um, our valued member of the Fourth Estate. And if you two wouldn't mind introducing yourselves just for the records. I'm Rosemary Fritz, I live in West Eden Road. Uh-huh. Peter Blattinger, same advert called West Eden Road. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity to, to speak, if that's what you'd like to do, in just a few moments. Okay. Um, and then you're, you're, you're more than welcome to stay, but you don't have to stay for the, for okay. the whole Okay, probably going to be <laughs> um, I need an adoption of the minutes of May 20th, 2019. I don't need one, but I entertain one. I'll <laughs> move one. adoption. I'll, I'll second the minutes. Okay. Uh, we do need to change the date on the minutes from the 17th to the 20th. What? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, no other further amendments, I guess, or adjustments. May we vote, please? Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. <coughs> I would now entertain a motion to approve payment of the uh, of bills in the amount of $32,089.99. These are broken down. General fund, $5,423.48. Fire fund sixteen thousand four hundred fifteen dollars and seventy two cents. Uh, does not include fixing the fire truck eighty two. Uh, cemetery four hundred twelve dollars. EMS billing eight thousand one hundred ninety dollars fifty nine cents. Road and bridge one thousand six hundred forty eight dollars seventeen cents. And capital projects zero. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Mr. Crockett moved. Second. And Mr. Hollister second. Any further discussion regarding adopting payment of these accounts? Hearing that, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, Ms. Fritz, Mr. Bessner, if uh, there's anything that you'd like to discuss this evening, the floor is yours. Okay. <coughs> I called you, or last week, mm -hmm. last week, and I never got a call back. So I thought I'd come to the meeting. Okay, it's well, the I, only way. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. I was out of town last week, and generally I monitor the, okay. the, the phone. Well, this has been an ongoing problem at the cemetery. Okay. And I thought that I know what I'm talking about. And it's gotten so bad, I can't even pipe up that way you know, anymore. It's washed out totally. And uh, I think it needs to be fixed. And you told me that you didn't have any money to fix it, but I think you owe it to us. Because Peter is right next to me, his wife is right next to my husband, mm -hmm. and we go there frequently, and I think it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we'll take care of it. You will? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, are you going to black? I'm not sure what we're going to do uh -huh. at this point, but we will make it, we will make it passable for you, okay. sure. Right. Yeah, I'm, obviously I'm handicapped and the washed out spots and I sometimes have problems over almost falling over. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it is where's the pretty bad. Section A. It's in the section A at the curve. It's the black top that's under so I'll knock it out of there. Take it out. <coughs> but there's no black top. Anymore. Under that gravel there is. Oh, right. we, we just pull it that's why it won't stay there. Okay. It washes out. Well, so we'll it's pull that out fixed. and fix it. I mean I talked to you several mm -hmm. times about it. So that's all we had. What about place. your flowers? What my flowers? His flowers. Oh, his they flowers. Yeah, they 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 take that your flowers. happened twice that my flowers disappear. Hmm. Oh, <coughs> well, that's not right. I mean, light flowers, not yeah. Yeah, plastic flowers. Hmm. But mine have never disappeared. I mean, I've never had that problem. But, but you have mostly cut flowers. Yeah. Hmm. So someone, someone digs them up. No, not digging, I mean, there are parts. Oh, you mean they, because of the water? Or someone mm -hmm. carries away them? Yeah, they yeah. steal it. <laughs> Carry away the potted flowers. Yeah. The second time I've uh, talked to him about that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I know, I don't know if you can do anything about it. I don't it. know. Yeah. Those thieves will pay. Put camera on. 
I have a lot of interesting ways of discouraging that, but probably I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, can, can you tell me? <laughs> I can well, turn off the camera. It has to do with high voltage electricity. <laughs> oh. I wonder if there's some way that you that could anchor a flower pot that just made it a little difficult. To, you know, so if someone wasn't trying hard, they couldn't just pick it up. I don't know. It shouldn't have to do that. No, you should. Yes, yeah, but yeah, we, that's the point. The problem is here. Now that's all we have, and since you said you would fix it, I guess we can leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, and I'm yeah. sorry you had to make the trip. But all right. We couldn't do it another way, but all right, we'll get back to the regular agenda. We'll have correspondence then for the evening. Um, so you have uh, information about a Summer County Officer meeting that's next, that's actually this month, a couple weeks. So what? Date is that? And it's the 14th. Remind me what the no, summer <coughs> county meeting is. Oh, uh, it's a meeting that's called uh, offering from the Ohio Township Association, offering county officers an opportunity to get together and hear uh, about issues that are important to um, uh, townships. So, are any of us going? Uh, I'm going, and Carol and Stephanie's going. She's the president. So it's two from each county. Uh -huh. yes. That's just not an option for us. For me. Uh, no, unfortunately. So. Um, uh, regional planning information from a meeting last to 10 days ago. Um, meeting minutes from the Green County Township Association, which was May 14th. Um, an email from uh, two of you. Excuse me, two emails from Christina, Christina Cave from the WDC group regarding uh, technical bidding requirements that they're trying to address to include the USDA in their, in their bid, uh, 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 bids when they put them out for bid uh, later on this fall. Uh, oh, a quick little, yeah, from Dan Montgomery and I exchanged. Um, uh, this was this was funny. Maybe you guys can see it better than I. But I'll show it to you, Mark. In a minute. But th where that red line is, I had said that I couldn't see the the door from the kitchen or the dining room out into the patio. It seemed like it had been, you know, removed in the most recent perspective drawing. And he said, "Well, no, because it's recessed. You can't see it exactly." And he's got a little arrow that shows where it is. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I would have thought oh, those were gutters. <laughs> or downspouts. Well, they or are downspouts. Down that is a downspout, yeah. Oh, sure does. And yeah, we talked about that downspout, remember? And I said, it looks terrible in that rendition, et cetera, et cetera. I said, they weren't on the originals. And so I made a big stink about it. And then I went back and looked at the picture, and they were there. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's just their color coordinating. I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, he said it blends in better, mm -hmm. but it's so that was, in color versus the white. That was on my face. I was like, oh, well, roof will drink. Yeah. No, no kidding. We have the minutes of the most recent um, 529. Yeah, that would have been the most recent telephone conference that we had. We can talk about that a little bit in the new firehouse, although there wasn't much to it. Um, an interesting note from um, uh, Michelle Burns from Tecumseh Land Trust regarding the uh, bill that's before the um, Ohio House, uh, or it, I guess it's, in, it's included in the budget. Uh, oh no. Yeah, it's been merged into the oh, budget bill. Merged, uh, yeah. There's oddly enough, there's another House Bill 149 that's just a completely different topic. And she says it will encourage planning off land for residential development by keeping property taxes low until the development is finished. And if the development is never completed, it will have saved the developer lots of tax taxes while they speculate. So that's something to consider. We have information from. Um, Miami Conservancy District about how fish and bugs love low dam removals. Tell <laughs> Margaret that the other day. <laughs> we have a copy of the Agraria Journal. You missed it in the Yale Springs News. Sorry, Carol. You got competition there. Uh, we have a thank you note from Lisa Abel uh, from the Yale Springs Community Foundation regarding the $500 that we. Uh, seed money that we put in the 
a YSCDC program. We have a county memo from the Ohio Association, um, Township Association, and golf outing. Uh, we have a um, blurb from the uh, League of Women Voters of Great Dayton area. This stuff. We have a 2020 census update kickoff meeting, which has already happened, that Don went to, so perhaps we'll speak for that later. Is there any other correspondence in or out for the evening? Hearing none, we'll move to the fire department report. Chief, what you got? Yeah, got a few you. things for you. Uh, all right, since the last meeting, we've got 40 EMS calls, Holy 15 Jesus. fire incidents, and seven fire safety inspections. We're at 520 total calls for the year so far, which is uh, uncharted territory for us. <laughs> Maybe we should have a big graph on it. Well, Nate was talking about painting the walls with that white board paint, and we can just keep doing it. <laughs> this, um, of course, includes an expanded service area. Yes. Not as much as we thought, but I mean, you know, not eight to nine calls a month is obviously a good news, so. But it's, it's a lot of calls. So. Uh, two things I'd like to put on there, but hopefully you're signing checks. Um, so, Engine 82 had a small little uh, problem uh, two weeks ago, I guess. They uh, were driving back and getting fuel, and it just died. Um, so I was out of town. Joe called me, and my first fear was that someone put gasoline in the diesel engine. But no, that was not it. That guy. Um, so Denny was here. He went out, took a look. They couldn't get it started at all. Uh, batteries were all fine. So they had a towed. So they got that bill also. The Emins, we don't have that bill yet. Um, and the initial diagnosis was that the onboard computer system that controls everything had died. We were not happy here because that would be wicked expensive. Um, after consulting with Seagrave, the engineer at Seagrave, Dave found, uh, they went back and looked at a couple things and found that a wiring harness had basically melted, causing wire to short and all this kind of stuff and killing pretty much everything. So instead of a $5,000 repair, I think it's an $1,100 repair. <coughs> And it's back, except while they were doing the safety inspection afterwards, they found one of the front tires had a massive slash in it. Um, really? So that went to Detroit, and you have that bill for five hundred dollars for a new big truck tire. So, but it's back in service. <laughs> Why did the harness no? Um, it looks like one of the connect the thing, straps that holds it in place had broken off, okay. and it's kind of swung over too close to the. Uh, Exhaust pipe. It's, it's because Shorter. they're all yeah. hand built and they have, by necessity, unfortunately, they have no you know, real R&D departments. You know, there's, there's not right. long term testing before they put them on yeah. the road. So. They just throw them together and <laughs> hope for the best. Yeah. And when that happens, probably now they'll change. Maybe yeah. they'll change yeah, that's where pretty they much put what them. happens. Yeah. So yeah. It's been re obviously redone and resecured, so it shouldn't have at least another. Uh, hopefully another nine years. <laughs> a lot of vibration. Yeah, there is that too. And luckily it happened you know, on the way back from getting fuel and not going on a call or pumping a fire or something like that. Um, engine 81, the older one, uh, sprung a leak in its plumbing. Uh, one heck of a leak. Uh, enough that it was draining out the, the tank. pressure side? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was basically uh, one of the pipes coming right out of the tank. So it had all that pressure behind it right before the valve and it was draining out the tank in about two days. Mm -hmm. So uh, Finley Fire came out. Well, luckily, I had Casey Brewer was working that day, so I was able to make him crawl into the thing and get a photo. Uh, so Family Fire came and uh, was able to get the parts and get them all repaired, and it's happy as a lark. There's stainless steel piping in it. For what, what vehicle is this for? It was Engine 81. What was the valve? Uh, it was actually leaking in two places. Um, it was leaking right where it came out of the tank. The threads had just basically dissolved over. 23 years old, so mm -hmm. it dissolved over the years due to lots of moisture. Yeah, lots <laughs> of moisture in the old springs. And then there's a section where it goes into uh, flexible hosing that's got a metal rings in it, and the metal rings were rusting. And so we it was put, like a rainstorm. I think we put that hose on. Oh, okay. I think so. um, but it's all up to snuff again. So. Did you ever get the replacement dump valve for the old dump? 
The old tanker? No, it's on order. Still? Yeah. It was a, a, an annoying debacle. Mm. But, uh, it should be here in a couple of weeks, and we're going to put it on. How many debacles are not annoying? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I <laughs> never really thought about that. A little redundancy there. Um, you may have heard there was a series of tornadoes that came through the Miami Valley. Mm -hmm. Little Springs lucked out, unless you have a bunch of hostas or a car hood that got pummeled on the south side of town. But um, luckily, there was no reportable structural damage in any of the town, either the townships or the villages that we cover. Um, the morning after the tornado warnings, we had a structure fire. You may have heard the beautifully great article. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on uh, Fairfield Pike, uh, our crews were all over the township at that time doing damage assessments. But NJ-1 was on the scene with brand new plumbing, thank goodness, within five minutes of the alarm, and they quickly had water in the fire. Uh, the fire was knocked down within 15 minutes of arrival. It was a detached garage that was right next to the house. Um, a neighbor luckily saw the flames, went in, woke up the, uh, the two homeowners and their dog, and got them out of the house, mm -hmm. which was really I'm, I want to say that John is in wheelchair. Yes, he's wheelchair bound. And they were both, uh, all three of them were transported to Soin uh, with burn, minor burn injuries. And minor. On the grand scheme of things. Is there any precedent discharge? for uh, recognizing that neighbor? There is no precedent whatsoever. No, there, there is one more thing. That's not fair. Colin from. Because he does good. Most of my information is from the newspaper. Did the did the house not sustain significant damage? The house sustained some damage. Some damage. Um, the siding caught on fire. Okay. And no then structure. A little bit of fire. No, it's by our standards, it's completely fixable. Yeah. Okay. Um, there a little bit of fire extended in the attic. So the guys had to pull some ceiling, get to it, because it had, of course, blown in cellulose insulation, mm -hmm. the bane of firefighters everywhere. But um, yeah, it... Um, but that's what happened. It was, it was a click. I thought I thought it was just more or less just a garage, even though that was a hot yeah. fire. So it, and the neighbor's house had some melted siding as and well. And then it sounded like the, the problem with the minor burns was not from being in the house, it was from being too close to the garage when they exited that's the house. what it sounds like, yeah, coming down the ramp, because there was the fire. So, there was, so that they just nobody thought about going they, all, they had to head for the ramp, so... Uh, yeah, I would assume so. Because they were out, but... And then they had just got up by the time showed up. Thinking about, oh, you know, me in the zoning says, oh, structure should be certain distances apart because of fire. And right. the same way, if your exit is towards another building, then yeah. that isn't a very good exit in the case right. that that building's on fire. And, I mean, in their case, I don't think they have a lot of options to where the ramp yeah, where could go. Yeah, where they but it's... I, you know, it's not one of those clear, this is what you should do the right. next time. Oh, yeah. It's something to think about. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because definitely. The, the problem, in a, in a funny sort of way, was was not the fire, but the, the layout. Oh, yeah. And those are all things we think about when we see houses or ambulance-wise, that your hallways could be wide enough for a cop to get down. <laughs> Don't sleep in the far back bedroom if you're going to need us on a regular basis. <laughs> but, uh, and we had multiple um, departments assisted on the call. We had three, four, four of our apparatus there. Uh, both engines, the rescue, and one of the medics. Mm -hmm. And then Houston Fire and EMS, Cedarville, Mad River, Mad River and uh, Zenith Township responded to us. Um, the guys on the scene called uh, uh, sir, uh, dispatch contact with service master who came out and boarded up the house to keep all the rain from coming in, and the Red Cross was contacted to help. Help the residents. So, so it went pretty well. With the tornado stuff, uh, we had a tanker, or the tanker, our tanker, the tanker, was in Vandalia for 24 hours uh, on a state request to uh, assist when they had no water. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think they actually did anything. They just enjoyed a really good meal, is what Joe told me. And uh, it was funny, I got a phone call from the state uh, emergency response plan, and they were asking me if, because I'm the county coordinator, if there was uh, a tanker that and they needed another tanker to go for a day for 24 hours. And I said, well, I can call these guys. Oh, no, no, they've already been there. So pretty much everyone in the county had already been doing this except us, because someone put us on like the do not call list. Because we're close to Montgomery County, so we may have gone in to the county, been needed for a hmm. fire or something. But it was three days after the 20th, so I figured it was safe to 
mm -hmm. sent a crew. So, so the guys went. They were very appreciative. But they were there. Um, all right, we'll get to those. Uh, upcoming events, of course, street fair is coming. You may have heard there's this little ditty called Street Fair. So we'll be there with bells on. Um, we're doing a rope rescue operations course later this month. Uh, Jeremy's going to teach that and maybe I'll be assisting. So who takes a course like that? Um, hopefully all of our people. <laughs> well, about half the department right now is certified. It's not open to other, I mean, our other departments in Is it well, internal or we, external? Uh, okay, it's internal, but we'll invite other, some other departments to us. And there, I think there's an ODNR officer who wants to take the class as well. Who's the dummy that gets rescued with a rope? <laughs> they use each other. I'm just there the first night to make the class legit. I teach, I teach the PowerPoint part. Do you use a litter, or is this more on an emergency basis? Uh, they'll small? practice with multiple different uh, scenarios with both the, the, the stokes basket and just mm -hmm. harnesses and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see what else. Oh, at the end of this month, uh, last year there was an army of kids who showed up on Antioch campus for a week a group called Hobie. Yeah, they're going to be here. Yeah. They're, they're coming back. So last year, they came down and did a community service project here with us. Uh, so they washed trucks, and they weeded the front yard, and did a bunch of stuff. Um, and then we also participated, and they do this little scavenger drive around town one night, and we participated in that, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, is Hobie an acronym? or? Yes. Yeah. Hugh O'Brien Youth. H-O-B. Y. Okay. Youth something or other. Youth. Leadership Institute, I think is what it is, but um, they absolutely fill the college dormitories. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see, actually. <laughs> um, so they're coming back this year, so on the 29th they'll be down here to do a service project. So I think we're going to have them paint this room and maybe, uh, a couple other things for that as well. Um, and then they'll be doing their adventure race with us again. So. My daughter was a, a hobby hero or something that they oh, called cool. them. They were great kids. Well, I'm sure they were. Yeah, we tried to recruit them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh, and then we're planning an open house of sorts uh, in Bath Township to kind of formally introduce ourselves to our new customers. Um, once we don't have a fire station there, we're probably going to do it at um, Twin Towers Park, hmm. Project Hot Dogs or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, probably in the Ju June or July. Um, I don't know if we're going to win over, but hopefully. Are they providing Bath Township? Are they providing the um, advertising, the promotion? I've got to talk to Steve still about it. Uh -huh. We're just trying to figure out a couple of days that'll work for us, and I'll talk to him and mm -hmm. see what they can do. Um, and then I got a bunch of resolutions for you guys. And you need the numbers. I need well, the numbers. I don't need the numbers. But you. <laughs> we need the numbers. I'll be right. Yeah, back. you were out of here so quick today. I didn't <laughs> 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 oh, and other upcoming events, I think it's June 24th, the day that's effective for these promotions, but June 24th is the Monday after your last meeting of this one. That was confusing. The, the fourth, fourth, the fourth, fourth Monday. Monday, thank you. Um, <laughs> we'll do a, we're going to do a swearing-in ceremony for new members and then uh, swearing-in for promoted people. Mm -hmm. okay. But we'll get an invitation yeah. And cake will be served. Oh, cake? oh yeah, you gotta have cake, right? The swear. The official MTFR Kroger sheet cake. <laughs> okay. All right. So first one. First 17. one. Just, okay. So. Seventeen. Mm -hmm. Three classification of MTF. Basically, it's taking a volunteer fire volunteer firefighter MT, Forrest Weiss, from volunteer only to part time filling. So he'll be filling in part time shifts. <laughs> So it makes sense. So it's, it's not part of the one twenty four hour any of the twenty four hour shift. Correct. I mean he might cover part of it if one of the guys is sick or something, mm -hmm. but primarily he'd be filling in when one of the part time nurses is off or mm -hmm. if they need someone extra, you know, that kind of stuff. So and he's a good kid. Okay. He joined beginning of last year. So we have resolution two thousand 1917 reclassification MTFR employee, whereas continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department, and whereas current volunteer firefighter EMT Forrest Weiss, Weiss has acquired and demonstrated all necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of firefighter EMT for the fire rescue department 
in a part-time basis, and whereas Chief Alvin has recommended the reclassification of this employee, and whereas funds are available for this purpose within the Fire Department's 2019 operating budget, therefore be it resolved that Forrest White shall be reclassified from volunteer to part-time status within the Fire Rescue Department effective June 3rd, 2019. Is there a motion to approve Resolution 2019-17? I'll make that motion. Mr. Hollister moves. Is there a second? A second. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. All right, next up would be 18. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and we always reserve 18. That, that number's been <laughs> <It's laughs> held for years. Is this the Nate one? This is the Nate one. Okay. It should be in order unless it's weird. Okay, yeah, that's what I was asking. Uh, so this is the uh, a resolution uh, promoting Lieutenant Nate Ayers to Captain. Uh, Nate's been a lieutenant for two and a half years. A sergeant prior to that for two years. Um, he'd be filling the vacancy created when Amy flew the coop last year. Mm -hmm. Brighter and bigger things, how dare she. Um, but uh, Nate's certainly proven himself over the years. I mean, he's been with us for 10 years. So taken a lot of responsibility and it's done an outstanding job. So as we talked two days ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So he's gone through all the... He's gone through all the rigmarole he's mm -hmm. got to go through and okay. um, pass the rigmarole. <laughs> and he's ready, ready to roll. And that would be effective with that swearing in ceremony on the 24th. So, okay. so that would be resolution 2019-18. I would be looking for a motion uh, to promote MTFR personnel to captain. Whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within fire traffic rescue department, and whereas a vacancy exists within the position classification of captain, <coughs> and whereas Lieutenant Nate Ayers has acquired and demonstrated all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of, in the capacity of captain, and whereas Chief Alman has recommended the promotion of this candidate. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Lieutenant Nate Ayers shall be promoted to the rank of captain within the Fire Rescue Department, effective June 24th, 2019. Why the 24th? That's just the swimming. Oh, okay, I see. Let's do it all. He doesn't try to get his uniform to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is there a motion to approve 2000, resolution 2019-18? I'm waiting for motion. Mr. Yeah. Crockett moves. I'll second it. Mr. Halster seconds. Any further discussion regarding uh, passage of Resolution 2019-18? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. And last but not least. <laughs> Number 19. <laughs> um, this is, we discussed this in the executive session two months, two months, two weeks, two meetings ago. That's what I'm trying to say, two meetings ago. Um, as part of trying to get the department more on track with how we currently function, um, and this is to reclassify and promote uh, Joe, the other two full-time guys, Joe Penudo and Alex Went. Um, currently they serve as firefighter paramedics, but as, as we discussed, they also supervise their entire shift, but don't really have any authority because they're not in the role of supervisors. So this would go, change them to the newly developed positions of firefighter, paramedic, supervisor, and give them the ranks of the lieutenant, uh, so that they can, um, one, internally have the authority to do the job that they're doing. It also gives them uh, externally the appearance of, of authority and then different kind of helmet and rank mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, both these guys are more than qualified for the positions. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, I've already been doing the job since pretty much since they were appointed last year to the 24s. Mm -hmm. So, um, and with that, they, they're in charge of scheduling their guys on their shifts and making sure that all the tasks are getting done for the day and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty much a supervisory thing, but mm -hmm. they don't have the authority technically to do it since their positions don't get away, so. Are they currently ranked? No. Mm -hmm. So Just they're guys. lieutenants because they need to be officers in order to supervise? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I looked around at other departments, pretty much east of the Mississippi, that function in a similar structure as we do now. Um, it was pretty standard, almost all of them were some type of 
officer, I mean, depending on what the region does, mm -hmm. uh, but the equivalent of lieutenant, you know, which is a company officer or shift, shift officer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I spoke with um, a guy who used to be here as a volunteer with us years ago, Mike Stoner. Um, yeah, Mike left about 10 years ago uh, when he accepted a position with a department in a suburb of Pittsburgh, which is the Pittsburgh original, um, Mount Lebanon. And I mean, they're significantly bigger than we are, about 30,000 people, but the fire department operates very similar to we. I mean, they have a combination of full time guys and then an army of volunteers. Mm -hmm. All their full time guys are supervisors because they have to be. So they all function as lieutenants or higher. Um, and it still gives, they give their volunteers the opportunity to also progress up in the ranks. Mm -hmm. um, so after some lengthy conversations with him, it, it made the most sense to go with this this model. Um, and it gives them the authority to do the job. Concurrently, we'll continue the process that we have in place with the other general who are testing. Um, there's five of them now, who are volunteers, mm -hmm. and Ted is in that weird kind of hybrid position. Um, and the plan is to have someone to you guys for a volunteer supervisor position before the next Dusty's going to go Um, I, should, I can't do it that way. I can't, can't lose any people. <laughs> right. So uh, I reviewed the, the position description that was, was created for that, uh, for this new position, and it seemed fine. Have you made changes since that draft was distributed? No. Um, did you make up these? I know the original one was just based on the position itself, and then the additions were based on the responsibility. Did you just make those up or did were those no, I took the, from other? I took the additions from the other position descriptions we have for the officer positions. Uh -huh. So I took the ones that seem most relevant. Uh, you, know, you guys know every position description has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, mm -hmm. So the ones that I added were the ones that are actually, I thought, were the most important. Mm -hmm. It would they also either keep it from turning into a 17 page position description. Mm -hmm. um, so those are all the could, ones that I think. Could we are, repeat what you just said? <laughs> no, fluff. That every position well, you know, description, I, as we well know, well, just a lot of fluff. Just review the position description for trustee, and you'll understand. Well, one of the things I'm I've not learned, arguing. Just, <laughs> one of the things I've learned in my career is the uh, the amount of fluff, and I mean, I'm guilty of it too. When, uh, you are guilty of it. When I came in, <laughs> our standard operating procedure manual needed to be redone, so we, we did it. And then we did a revision a few years later. I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? You know, <laughs> why say in six paragraphs what you can say in three lines? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, Thank you. So. <laughs> anyway, so do we need to adopt the new position? Yeah, I kind of. I thought I had both in there. Oh. Oh, no, actually no. Yeah, you probably wouldn't need to adopt. As a new position, it's so hard to get one if you don't have it. Yeah, it says the newly developed position. Yeah, it said, but it's a, it's reclassifying them to it, but but we haven't done anything to actually make that position. I, mean, okay. I don't know what you guys think. If that's, I think so. Yeah, I mean, typically you approve new positions, yeah. so, and it is technically a new position. So then I would make a motion to uh, 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 adopt the newly created position description for supervising firefighter paramedic um, within the fire rescue department uh, as presented in the uh, May 17th handout from the chief. Um, no, I, I just read May 20. Well, it was for the May 20 meeting, but oh, I think okay. it was <laughs> handed, or made it on the 17th. Yeah, I was out of town on the 20th. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I'll make that motion. Yeah, you were in, um, you were graduating. second, then. Yes, did, sorry, you, did you catch that, Mark? Yes, you made, you made the motion and Mark seconded it. Is there any further discussion regarding the position description? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, now we have resolution 2019 <laughs> 19, uh, which is the re reclassification and promotion of MTFR personnel. It reads, whereas the continuing need exists, 
to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department and whereas the needs of the department require ongoing examination and modification of its structure and services and whereas Chief Altman in consultation with his staff has determined that reclassification and promotion of current <coughs> time, bless you, bless employees uh, Joe Canuto and Alex Gwen <laughs> is in the best interest it's in quotes, yeah. of, the, of the department <laughs> operations. Now therefore be it resolved that Joe Canuto and Alex Gwent shall be reclassified from the positions of firefighter paramedic to the newly developed and approved um, <laughs> position of firefighter paramedic supervisor within the fire rescue department and promoted to the ranks of lieutenant effective June 24, 2019. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, resolution 2019-19? Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second. Mr. Powell's just seconds. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Uh, just technicality, uh -huh. what was the number for our previous motion, was that, that was classified a, as a resolution? No, no. it was no, a motion. Okay. Okay. So, no, okay. no change. So what was the number? 1919? Oh, oh, now we're going to vote. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mutier. Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I think I'm taking a bunch of your time. <laughs> Any other questions for the team? All right, wow. Uh, yeah, did we? Uh, who's, who thinks what about how that fire started? The most recent fire. Oh, uh, the, the working theory, the same fire marshal was called into investigate the fire. Uh, Danny spoke to the investigator the next day or so. They were going on a working theory of a potential laser strike that sparked the fire. Um, one of the downsides, no, it's not a downside, um, since unfortunately, I mean, since unfortunately nobody was, uh, the house wasn't a total loss, it was a high dollar loss, and nobody was killed. The state doesn't put out the funds, there's a test that has to be done, mm -hmm. some kind of electrical complete, uh, yeah. but in some kind of test, the state's not going to pay for unless those big things are hit. So they were pretty certain of it, but they kind of declared that. So typically what happens is then the insurance investigators who have a lot of deeper pockets in the state fire marshal will do that test. And I think Denny said he talked to an insurance investigator who came to get the copy of the fire report and that they were going to go out and do that. They were working on a theory, either a direct strike or a strike to a utility that brought the... the oh, the, the surge. Could yeah, it may have come in through the gas lines. Hmm? They can come in anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, so... Um, that's why fire investigations are pretty specialized fields. <laughs> um, to remind me, the pre two previous fires we've had of late, were those settled as to what cost? The one on Glenview or Birch or whatever? Uh, Glenview was um, an accidental start from a something from Christmas burning, tree or uh, something. It was. Um, Incense that fell over mm -hmm. on, a, uh, on a chair, a big easy cut chair or recliner, and sparked mm -hmm. a fire. And, 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 and then the one out on West uh, Yellow, Dayton Yellow Springs Road. Uh, that one was, it's technically undetermined because the amount of damage to the structure. I mean, unless his insurance company came in and did something, which we're not aware of, the state fire marshal's uh, preliminary was some sort of electrical. Thank you. You're welcome. And two quick things, if that's all right. Um, I was at a meeting today with the Women uh, Community Foundation, and as you, I'm sure, well know, that uh, Antioch Hall is being uh, asbestos removed, or it has, it has started, will start to have asbestos removed in the areas that the um, the new heating system are going to go into. And that's an eight-week project that starts on the 17th of this month. So she says it will be done before the stair climb. Okay. Well, it Hopefully. shouldn't actually affect the areas where the stair climb is taking place, but it's hard for them to isolate the stair climb from the rest of the building, yeah. too. So, okay. it's just when, when, when is the stair climb? Saturday, September 7th. So yeah, that's more than eight weeks away. Yeah. 
The other thing is, a couple weeks ago, I went to an interesting discussion, uh, our, our, our presentation from the Yale Springs Chamber of Commerce about social media um, and social media policies. And I know we've talked about that a, a little bit here and there, but do we have, do you have, because I know, I don't think we have, a formal written social media policy for your folks? I okay. will get your copy. All right, that'd be great. Um, yeah, we put ours in place probably about halfway through last year, maybe earlier, you know, towards the first half. Mm -hmm. And it was um, not a response to anything, mm -hmm. but just Annie and I both had that kind of gnawing feeling like we should have something in place because you read all these stories, especially for government employees. And, um, and I sent it to uh, whoever it was at the time who was our prosecutor. I can't keep track. I think it was that thing. Mm -hmm. And she approved it as the form. Like mm -hmm. We took it, it was a hybrid from different agencies' policies um, from all over the country, basically. And the, and the goal of the policy is? Depending on who you ask, um, mm -hmm. some of my members have said it's to restrict their First Amendment rights. How dare we? Um, Stephanie then told me that, and pointed me in the right direction to a Supreme Court thing that says if you're a public employee, you have no First Amendment rights, <laughs> basically. Um, it's just a basically, it, we have a small section about how the department will use its social media and then the rest is about individual members and what they basically can and cannot do. Uh, and it's pretty open still, it just talks about, you know, don't identify yourself as a department member, or don't take photos of yourself when you get fire scenes, because that's a big thing now. Mm -hmm. People want to take these selfies in front of someone's poor, you know, their house that's burning to the ground, they're like, hey, here we are. Um, so it still gives people a lot of leeway because we've had situations come up that I'm like, ha I don't think it's a darn it's lot in there. You know, so nothing terrible, obviously. But would you have any objections that if once you gave it to me that I asked a, a consultant who gave this presentation um, to uh, review it? Oh, please, and make any suggestions. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. It was it was actually an interesting thing because when we searched for online. Um, Policies. The vast majority were more geared towards, you know, how the agency would use it, mm -hmm. use social media. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how we're going to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we needed stuff, so it was harder to find. So yeah, please do. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I don't. I don't think Stephanie went through it with a fine tooth comb mm -hmm. because I don't think that's what they do. They yeah. usually just say it looks like it's okay and it's not going to be sued mm -hmm. easily. <laughs> Anything else for the fire department? Uh, new firearms report. The only thing I have, and in, in, you were on that call on Wednesday, um, it's a relatively brief call. Oh, yeah, phone call. Sorry, I'm thinking like an emergency call? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was just pretty much a progress report. It's a continuation of the, uh, the value engineering list that we went through and some of the, uh, you know, the very multitude of minor, minor changes that have to be made in order to accommodate Things like remove, uh, lowering the lowering the building two feet and moving the, the sleeping quarters out into where the fitness room was, all of those things, you know, all that stuff has to be reviewed. And of course, it has to be reviewed for code compliance and, and just constant stuff. So they're working on that. A good deal of that is done. Uh, it is done to the point where um, hopefully there is some of the the uh, drawings and specifications have been sent to the subcontractors that they use for um, specifying equipment and routings and duct work and it all has to be all that stuff that has to be changed and then as soon as they're finished then it can go to an estimator for a cost estimate as to what it's and they're still hoping to get that by the it won't be this <coughs> week but the week after next Wednesday and have a face to face meeting here. I think that's the twenty fourth. So, uh, have a face-to-face -face meeting here, which would be a special meeting for us, and you know, we will advertise it as such. If in fact that they, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. It. This is in May. May, June. May is done. I, that's what I thought. <laughs> I, I go. I, I've got June 26 as a. 
That's the fourth Wednesday. Well, then maybe the 26th. Mm -hmm. I would have to go back and review the notes again. That was just. <coughs> but you believe it was a Wednesday? Yeah, I believe. I'm going to pencil that in just in case. So that's all I have for the new firehouse. Uh, <coughs> We're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony, believe it or not. We're going to have it. And we're going to have it potentially late August, early September. So if we're going to have one, we have to think about how we might want to have it. Okay. So I was thinking, having nothing else to do on my vacation last week, I was thinking that, let's just say, oh, that does work. Let's just say this drawing is great. That's Xenia Avenue, and this is the, this is the lot for the, where the firehouse is going to be. And so what we would do is we'd take all the apparatus that we have, every little piece, including we drag that thing over from Clifton, whatever it is. You know, okay. that, <laughs> the Clifton thing, the yeah. The whole fire engine. And put a canvas as a horseshoe behind, you know, line, line them all up, make it look, make it look good. We do it at night with the headlights on. We could have, we could have uh, Youngs bring their little truck up here, you know, and, and give everybody ice cream. That was fun. Hot dogs, so I forget what they have in that little truck, but cheese curds. That, yeah, cheese curds. That might be fun. Um, we're good. <laughs> we can have a little, a little baby lectern and a, and a rented, you know, microphone. You got to have that, and you know, say two minutes worth of nothing. But the, the important part, part, what thought that I had was we would have kind of, you know, back here the the groundbreaking part where you have the shelves and things, but we would only have department personnel do the shovel. Now, obviously, we got lots of department personnel, and we probably can't get 50 golden shovels and, and well, I think we'll have 20 I people, but, but I can paint. I've got gold paint. If you don't want the real shiny paint. ones, it looks pretty get, good. I can paint a lot of shovels, shovels though. Well, they bring uh, I can pay 50 <laughs> shovels. <laughs> bring your own shovel. <laughs> so, but they could do it in shifts if they had to, but I, I just think, you know, it's, 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 it's for the department, it's for the volunteers, it, you know, it's not for county commissioners and... Oh, yeah, and, well, that's cool. And state senators and such and such. Have the volunteers do the? Maybe the association could choose a few volunteers. Why don't they choose them all? Well, I mean, if you want to do it, well, then you want that one stick. I'm just thinking of shovels. <laughs> well, we could do it like I said. We do it in shifts. So we get twelve shovels, so we get twelve people shovel and then give the. They can bring their own shovels. If they got a shovel, they can come. <laughs> <laughs> they can use mine. I got. I got one they can use. I, got I like your idea. But you guys, you know. Chime in. Not you guys. So you don't want to shovel. No. We'll be on the. We'll be on the. Uh, the, the, ribbon, the ribbon. The ribbon cutting. Oh, the ribbon cutting. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll get <laughs> all the mucky mucks and anybody we can find. Make it more okay. fun. You mean when we ribbon cut it? When we oh, when it's we, ready to go? Oh yeah, we're not ribbon cutting yet. Yeah. No. no. Okay. No, 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 we're not ribbon cutting. This is a ground. Yeah. Okay. I was. I was confused. I was like, wait, we're doing both. We'll break the ribbon with a shovel. Alright, so we can fine tune that as we go along, but it's just something to think right. about. You know. Yeah, well, cheese curds. It's gonna happen soon, so curds. you better get that you better talk to Young soon because that's probably that truck's probably booked. Probably is. Um, well, maybe not in a week back though. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because it's really you just want one person from the media out filming all of this and then distributing it you all. Know, media. Mean, everybody doesn't have to be there. You know, right now? Nope. <laughs> All right. We get live on Fox too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move to the cemetery road oh, part yeah. before the sun goes down here. Okay. Then we got a little while. <laughs> well, we had a couple burials since our last meeting. Just two. Yep. Glen Forest. Oh, was it empty? Three people. Oh. Sad. Oh man. Uh. How's the cemetery look? Did you get the last word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought yeah. they looked pretty good. Yeah, they looked great. Check Clifton. Yeah. We're good, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Did it get enough thistles? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's still lots to yeah, go. There's still a lot there. I gotta short them on the whole thing. I gotta deal with them. We, we, they, it may come to that, but okay. once once they're once they're ripe or whatever 
once they start turning purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotta go for that. And uh, other than rooting the cemetery, that's all I have. Do you have any damage from the winds? No. And in the cemetery? Yeah, anywhere. No, we had two little trees down, maybe mm -hmm. 25 feet long. Mm -hmm. I figured you might have had more damage from something washing we had somewhere. More, we had more leaves and corn stalks and mud yeah. and gravel on the roads. We had water there. Really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not lucky. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, totally. It went around us. But the hail was yeah. it huge. It's out on the south side. Did you take a phone call about um, the cemetery road last week? She yeah. said she left a message. I, I just didn't, no, I didn't take it. I talked to her mean, before about yeah. the that story, you know, as soon as I could, you know, I just realized it was. She said she that called time. here, that's why. She said she called you, maybe she called your phone phone? I didn't have a message there. Mm -hmm. I know, I didn't. Okay. All right, well, <coughs> perhaps we'll move. Uh, yeah, I don't think we reported to the public that you have tentatively contracted with Prey Groomers to. Right, I just haven't set a date. I don't think you haven't set a date yet with them. I just wasn't sure when. It was this fall, right? October Sometime or something? Sometime into September or fall. Uh huh. And I'll be gone the yeah. 12th through the 23rd. Prey Groomers? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. there's a. Mm -hmm. and, uh, she said call her back and then when we come to those times. So I'll call her. Set that up for. In the September first October. Mm -hmm. Okay. When's the second street there? Second weekend in October. Second suitor. Second suitor. Second suitor day. Strat yeah. Second Saturday in October. <laughs> <laughs> that might be something though, because they like it. they were here once for it. Oh, they like to come for street day. Yeah. <laughs> it's alright. Yeah, I had somebody like that once. Contract. Okay, I'll call. We put them up. Well, I don't know. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah. I don't know how that worked at the last time. They stayed out at the hotel. At the last time. No, they stayed at Lamar's DB. The last time when they were here, I no, thought they stayed out. Ago. But Not last year. They didn't come the very last year. Last, no, no, they haven't been here for three or four years. But the very last time, I think they stayed out here. No, oh, really? Or maybe the first time? At, no? They stayed at Lamar a couple times that they were here. I think the last time I'm pretty it's sure like they stayed out. They had <coughs> come in town at night, they liked it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll call them. How, how many people is it? Three. Three. Or four if he brings his wife, if she comes with him. Four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, he has a crazy road right there. Yeah. Yeah. He told me today I hadn't got to it, but he still wants, he wants to, I guess. The road where? In the, uh, the wall path. In the back of the National. In the National Railway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Anything for Mark? Mm -hmm. Or Mark, anything for Dan? Mm -hmm. Ms. Foster? Oh, did we do road? We did road. What do you say? Well, we kind of segued. I didn't know we were going for that. <laughs> yeah. I was talking about trees and trees. I thought we were damaged. Cemetery. No, no, no high water or damage in the cemetery. Oh, how about the roads? Yes, we had a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had water. They, they still have water. Did you have damage? Yeah, just a couple of trees. Okay, that's what you said. But we had a lot of water. We've had this report before. Okay, all right, yeah, okay. The bears are repeating two or three times. And I just finished the first round of mowing the ditches, but only one pass because of kind of yeah. a lot of water. <laughs> the end might not be able to get out. You know, kind of I would imagine it being June 4th, they're probably that's true. 10 feet high, high too. They're pretty tall, so I'm going to start tomorrow trimming, and then I'll go back as soon as I'm going to trim it and hit them all again straight there. Anyway. It's just too wet to get there. And water standing in ditches where we usually don't have water. Yeah, that was a lot of water. And it's amazing that the, that the farmers have just started to get back in the field because it's been so wet. Yeah. I think we had about five inches of rain. 
We must have, because yeah, at the like shop, the water was in was the horse. Little, it was, it was like just between, the between three and five, depending on where yeah, you were. Yeah, at our, at our house, it was well, four. Well, at South River, four. it was running at least knee deep at 72, so I had to block that because they, the deputy said, can you block that? Sure. I had two and a half so, of my gauge, but I realized they couldn't have caught the It was flowing right. across 72, about three feet deep. So, yeah, I can't handle it. Oh, yeah, I was that. Yeah. yeah. The 343 water. and 370 was underwater, too, apparently, mm -hmm. which I've never seen that before. And the harvesting was just, just a lake, or as you can see, reflection on the. I bet. Yeah. yeah. But we had the. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. all stars were out. It was real eerie. It was dark. It was real dark and eerie. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Are you done now? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just <laughs> off the report. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, oh, Standing committee report. Oh, that's the first of month. Oh no, I've missed Richard. Sorry. Oh, well, that's all right. If you can miss me, that's, that's uh, three zoning permits were issued since the last time I saw you. Um, one for an addition to um, the old pit stick house on East Eden Road, which is now Leslie Edmonds. Um, uh, dietitian business. Mm -hmm. uh, next one was um, for Chris and Amy Arnett on Rife Road, and this is an agricultural barn. And the most recent one was actually issued it today, and this is an addition to the Semler's house out on Snip Road. Um, I had a long conversation with Laura Curlis on behalf of Agraria, um, basically boiling down to when, is, when are the courts going to interpret what the agritourism statute means or doesn't mean. Um, she asked if she could talk directly with our counsel. I said, well, that, I don't have any authority to do that. I can send an email to the prosecutor's office and ask if they want to mm -hmm. chat with you. In which I did, and I got no response from that. that that's only that hasn't been so long that it, I might still hear hear back. But um, you know, the, Laura did the same thing that I've heard other people say. Well, the intent of the law is. Wait a second. I I can't operate on the intent. I can operate on what's written down here. But it does seem like that that statute in its vagueness is. Is gradually working its way through the courts, but I haven't actually heard any well, specific it's rulings it's from the court. I thought I would have thought something would have been Me too. ruled out by now. Um, unfortunately, we're not having the regular zoning inspector meetings that we used to at regional planning, which was a good source of getting that information because in Greene County we had several people all having mm -hmm. being contested. And so I've, I've lost that channel. Um, Does Devin not want to do it? or I don't know. I mean, I haven't asked him personally why it's not. If but it's not happening. It, if you were finding it useful, uh, why don't we? Well, we can, I can lean a little bit in that direction and see what happens. That, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm aware uh, in is it Sugar Creek Township has Spring Valley. Yeah. Uh, no. No. no, Spring Valley has Spring, Spring Valley. Valley Town. Spring Valley. Spring Valley. It's either Spring Valley or Sugar Creek. I believe it's Sugar Creek of what you're, you're referring to, because I've heard uh, those discussions about that. Okay, there have there, been... <laughs> yeah. And, and for, former fiscal officer Mary Taylor was, was the complainant. And uh, I think she's very approachable. You might just call her and, and she could steer you to whoever... Uh, it might be talking about the same issue. It might be different. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is, there are some cases bubbling. Yeah, it doesn't well, really the, the case is bubbling for a long time. I'm yeah. waiting for the either to boil over or, or, or turn off the fire. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, you know that the actually, the, I'll I'll call her. I'll ask. Her. Okay, well that. If you if you know <laughs> you've got the number and the person that would that would certainly facilitate. But I'll I'll ask about why um, Rhonda Painter 
works now with regional planning, and she could convene these meetings. Devin doesn't have to, you know, yeah, take the time to do it if he, mm -hmm. you know, needs his time for other things. But uh, uh, it would, it was, I mean, it, it depends on on the nature of your township. But for many of us, it was a good good time to check in, and, and I was certainly getting useful information and. And it seems like our local issues are different than, say, what people say to the OTA they want in their mm -hmm. their meetings. You know, my, I'm not, I'm not getting any of my suggestions on their list, and their list of topics are not things that seem to be happening, you know, in Miami Township. So our local issues do make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. So that those are the two important things. The the zoning commission doesn't meet in May because it's planting season now. They probably should have met in May because they would be planting in June. But um, Maybe. obviously no a action there. So did you and Laura come to any meeting of the minds? Or no, just the fact I said, you know, if you can provide me with any case law, uh -huh. that's what you refer to, I'd be happy to know about it. I don't have easy ways of, of pulling that information out. I said I would follow up and, and if she wanted to, you know, if, if it could be arranged to talk with the prosecutor's office, that was fine. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, there were no definite conclusions. It was interesting, um, on Sunday, the Tecumseh Land Trust had their annual meeting, and Susan Jennings spoke at that meeting because they are just about to sign their first easement, or I think, or maybe they signed it at the meeting. I guess they should tell something. Else. Anyway, and, and, and Susan, the takeaway for me was, well, we've been operating for two years learning about what not to do. <laughs> I mean, they've experimented with a lot of things, and I don't think they've quite settled down into what their operation is going to be, which yeah. is part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. Things keep changing. And, you know, what I said to them is, just talk to me about what, what you want to do before you lock it in place. And, but the result of that has been... You know, to to um, chat with Laura, not to chat with somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I talked with Steve Heller a couple of months ago, the county prosecutor, and he had said he had basically promoted someone from within uh, to be the representative for townships. Uh, and he, he gave me the name. I don't recall it, but uh, okay. Well, he, I may not be up to date on who's representing well, us. He hasn't. He hasn't sent out a notification. I mean, he's always in the past sent out an official mm -hmm. letter saying, you know, that this person. I'm trying to think. Elizabeth is, is. Elizabeth is all we have now. Yeah, that's what I thought. That was the right person. But to, she's, but she's the head of the civil. I oh, mean, I see. She so would, she's she, not really. She would be overseeing the person. Whoever would okay work with us. Right. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, she oversaw Stephanie. She oversaw Allison. right. And she originally, a long time ago, she was our representative, but she got. Mm -hmm. She got kicked upstairs. Yeah, she got kicked. Well, I just had, had the impression she was our representative when Stephanie left until, you know, future notice. But I well, guess that's that just by that default. Would be, that would be the case by default because that's the yeah. only one there is. Okay. Well, so we're still waiting on seeing whether they're, they're going to pay as much attention to townships as they did in the past. <laughs> yeah. It was certainly nice having Stephanie willing to talk and mm -hmm. act. That was yeah. a bright light. Uh, anything else for Richard? Uh, Stand for report, reports will be the next time. Would you please add um, anywhere the YSD CD? I did that, didn't I? No, you added. What did I add? You added the. Um, Greek County Greek Census Committee. What, what do you want now? The YSDC. Oh, that's The Community Development yeah. Corporation. That's another thing. YSDCIC? <laughs> no, no, it's YSCDCD. CDCD. Mm -hmm. All right. Community development. <laughs> Can we just put YSCDCD and we don't know what it is? <laughs> we know what it is. <laughs> it's community, it's Y, it's C, there's it's an a, it's, ID, it's, it's community. It's a public development corporation, corporation rather than a private one. There's no P in there. Yeah, there's no a C -E -I -D? P. I D. 
It's community development and community development corporation. Investment development. No, there's no, no I. There's no I. No, we took the I out. Okay, community <laughs> development corporation. corporation. It's incorporated. What's, what's the D? You said why? Dedicated. CD. Dedicated. CD. Oh. Oh. Yellow Springs Dedicated Community Development Dedicated. Corporation. Community. Okay. Not all. My humble opinion is that dedicated is unnecessary, but, no, but, <laughs> but it sounds it, good. Isn't it the successor to the group that that managed the Commerce Park for a while? Um, it's, in a sense, but that but is the a con private concept and group structure that wasn't a government different. group, and this is okay. An open. To the public. Is there anything to take off on here, or are we just going to keep adding? Kind of a and this is a 501c3. Uh -huh. Nothing to take off. Okay. All right. Okay. Got it. Any new business this evening? Any old business this evening? I move. That's going to be somehow. There's a motion on the floor. We will be adjourned. All right.